because we're back to some wintry, rainy, windy weather. Yeah. And I feel like that's more in keeping with the grim. The energy. The energy of this podcast is two people sitting outside in some fairly unpleasant conditions just being martyrs to the podcast for some reason choosing like we could we could go to one of our houses and do this you know that or a little cafe yeah but you know what people lo- you know but people people love it when we stop yeah. talking and talk about a thing that they can't see really I, I, you've had I, some feedback oh yeah you, oh, that that is a hundreds highlight. of emails everybody's like i love it i love it when you stop talking and talk about an animal that i can't see yeah that you both just stop and stare at and stop talking that's yeah. that they're like please never stop that that's the best bit of the podcast also, if you could eat more crisps when you're recording, yeah. that would grow. I'm struggling now <laughs> because there is an open bag of Tyrrell's Sweet Chilli and Red... Oh my gosh, a sponsorship. Uh, Tyrrell's Sweet Chilli and Red Pepper Crisps. Right, That's which not are the how best sponsorship works. No, no, I know. I'm about... Let me finish my sentence. They're the best crisps in the world. And I'd say we've eaten these kind of during the podcast well, yeah, for like the were... last three weeks. So maybe... They could. Well, they've already got the. Us. They've already got the promotion now, haven't they? What? Yeah. Well, maybe you... I'll do it more. <laughs> I'll do it more. I'm going to stop talking about it until they pay us some money. Right. Great. We've just had a weather warning come up on our phones, which is Woo! nice. So we just had to send a message out saying, keep, you know, we're watching the skies. We may have to cancel a session. And it's the difficulty of running, you know, cancelling a toddler group because of weather is like that's a bit annoying got sort some refunds out but it's a kindergarten day it's a drop off day mm-hmm. that we're having to you know consider and there's so much more mental load to go on oh, people have got to make a re- alternative childcare arrangements and mm. oh and what if it isn't and what if it is and how can you compensate and and that's yeah. just you really don't want to cancel you don't want to cancel no. basically you really don't um but um that's not what we're here to talk about no we're here, well, so we were just saying that we think there's a few different names for this podcast and we're not sure what the end it will be until we get to the end and kind of, I don't know, I guess when at the we've end, blathered on, when we've, we'll, there'll be a focus there somewhere, but the initial idea was... Uh, deep play versus shallow play and it was coping with boredom. And then I've extended that to levels of engagement and well, you thought deep for... and shallow was a bit too binary. Would that be fair? Um, yeah, or just some of the scenarios we just talked about, mm-hmm. I think, are not necessarily to do with play. They're to do with just, like, engagement in general. Okay. Well, I mean, I kind of... The, the reason that this came into my head is it's a thing that I have um, been aware of the last few years. When you get to um, whatever winter festival you celebrate, um, normally there's some present giving involved particularly for children and um there's i mean there's been a shift away i feel like for a lot of families recently um but uh the almost that um what's the what's the name of the kid in harry potter his uh, D- dursley. D- dudley, yeah, dudley dudley and he's counting his presents and mm-hmm. going but last year i mm-hmm. got 38 and this year it's 37 yeah um and that idea of like uh, volume of gifts in one day mm-hmm. um, and that um, actually that doesn't encourage um, the, the oh now here's the word I was going to say the best play or good play but maybe that's not what I mean what I mean is that kind of only facilitates shallow play mm-hmm. because it's a, a very high octane moving from thing to thing and only really asking so the, 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 the kind of definition that I like is shallow play is what does it do? And deep play is what can I do with it? Yeah. And so when children, um, you know, and, and that's not to say that either of them are bad, but that there should be a balance between the two. Um, and so a lot of children, when they get gifts at Christmas and lots of gifts, like the deep play of what can I do with it is harder. It requires more input, requires more imagination or you know thinking that oh maybe it's not just a, a thing maybe it could be a tower as well maybe it could be a and, it, as and well. it relies on a lot of time spent with that object which you yes. don't get if you've got a lot of objects because your attention is shared out amongst them um more so yeah. if you only have three things mm-hmm. available to you mm-hmm. then you're going to play with each thing for a longer amount of time um get bored with it and therefore yeah. then start testing out new ways of yeah, doing yeah. with it can I stand on it? Can yeah. it, you know, can it yeah. interact with this other object that I've got? Can yeah. it um, do whatever else? Um, and I do think as well that 
part of that is um you know let's let's not pretend we live in a bubble you know we live in a world of advertising and a lot of um there's a, there's a valid statement i think that's have you heard of the the love languages nope. have you heard of these um and it's like different ways that you show love and and sometimes people just misinterpret it mm -hmm. so one person's way of showing love might be oh they buy gifts for their yeah. significant <clears> other <throat> but the other person their love language is like time mm -hmm. you know and time together so you have this mismatch of their going well I do I am showing them I love them because mm -hmm. look I bought them this and I bought them this but if the other person isn't you know it's like you speaking mm -hmm. French to them and them going but they're not they're not speaking English they're yeah. not saying they love me and um you know and there's I think there's seven in in this theory which is kind of interesting um but the point that I was going to say was um the parents are just as uh, parents and, and gift givers, you know, grandparents, carers, whoever it is, um, are just as keen when children open the present for the first time to be like, look what it does. Let, mm -hmm. let me show you because because I've spent my money because of what it does, because mm -hmm. of what, you know, and so then uh, a kind of, I don't know, there's that pressure from outside to be like, use the toy or the, the thing, how it's meant to be used. Um, you know, if you bought your kid... I mean, Lego's a difficult example because Lego, you do do whatever with it. But if you if, if you could bought your kid a load of, uh, I don't know, action figures from a, a recent film and they started stacking them into a tower and not using the fact that they, I don't know, spin or fire guns or whatever, that's deep play because they're going, I'm going to stack these. They work quite well as, as bricks. But an adult might go, well, that's not what they're for. Do not, can, let me show you. Let me show you how they work and do all this. Um, and so that... Yeah, the kind of festive period for me is is quite an interesting time of deep play and shallow play. Yeah, that was a long waffle as to why we've got that. There's a whole movement um, with the four present thing. Have you heard that? I something am to wear, aware of it, yeah. something you want, something you need, something to wear, something to read, mm -hmm. and um, it being like a a rationale so that then you, you can curb your own spending and buying, mm -hmm. and also maybe transmit that message to other friends and family mm -hmm. um and say we're doing we are doing this this year we are committing to this idea mm -hmm. um which i was reading about yesterday um is the idea that you get each person four presents or that you i think it's from parents each, to children it's you get four children. right yeah and then what you say to the outside families can you get one of the well, four well this or? is the this is the debate that was happening on the website i was reading last night it's like right. how do you then go beyond so that that's kind of in the near family mm -hmm. um, and then how do you extend that idea out further to, to try and either transmit the message to fa other friends and family we mm -hmm. don't want any presents we, mm -hmm. you can offer some time you can offer like a mm. uh, an experience of some kind but we're trying to do this or to just like curb the spending a little bit and curb the amount and say well we're doing this she would love or he would love the book I, part I, I, or I know one family <clears throat> um, that do uh, they they spread the gifts from fram they sort of ask for everything up front in on December first mm -hmm. and they then spread it through December so that their daughter gets time to to play with each thing for a couple of days and then all something new and that's another way of like you know we talk about getting through the winter with burnout but getting through with for children and going mm -hmm. there's another thing every couple of days and then I think what they do is on Christmas day they've they've keep something that is like a uh, like a game to play with people or something so that you're not I mean, we're going off on a bit of a tangent about Christmas now, but that you're not um, on Christmas Day, you are actually interacting with your children yeah. rather than putting them in front of a pile of plastic and electronics and flashing lights, and then people go and then and then maybe feeling like, no, we didn't really spend Christmas together. Put your mm. electronics away, and you go, and the kids mm. quite rightly are going, you've just given this yeah. to me. I want to absolutely binge on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, um, but that's where we're going, and and that kind of gets me thinking about deep play and shallow play in forest school sessions um, and how that kind of interacts and um, but the first bit thing that sort of bullet point that I've written down is that I do think it touches on perseverance that we were talking about last week mm -hmm. um, and uh, because it's a very visceral for me at least a very visceral reaction if a child comes up to me and just goes no oh, I'm bored mm -hmm. because it's a complete cop out almost of just you you think for me you, you yeah do i'm really for me. i'm really interested in it and i'm really interested in why that happens um and i've had it a couple of times here but more often well i, I i'm going to link the i'm bored sentence with also what we what we're we doing now mm -hmm. what what what's next yeah what 
or what shall I do? What should we do next? Um, as a similar kind of like a moment where a person is at a loss for yeah. whatever reason. So I'm bored or I need instruction. I need guidance. I need a bit of input here from you. Um, yeah, I'm fascinated as to why that happens. And I've had it more often on school sites um, where... Mm -hmm they've been in lessons all morning and then they're coming outside for a couple of hours in the afternoon on their school field yeah. and there's been a lot of like yeah oh what what are we doing now and that comes from it being at school i think and it being you are well, the this teacher. is one of I, the things i've written down is the, is the the contrast between the forest school timetabling and the rest of many children's lives and, and yep. linking that back to when we read the john gatto stuff and he's talking about how much of their lives is prescribed yeah and it can be a really big shock yeah if you and the bob hughes thing it's just like the less yeah. time you give children to free play um the less they're able to do it yeah. it's just not a skill that they possess so it's um although it might be a little bit of a as you kind of describe like a bit of an affront to you as mm. in terms of your session and your planning and your prep and stuff and how you're running it the feels session. like an evaluation and it shouldn't it's yeah, just yeah, a, yeah, yeah. you know it's it's yeah. a statement about how they're feeling yeah and I think we know children that come to the woods regularly mm -hmm. who started out um, with that kind of oh, um, yeah. behaviour, kind of often saying, like, oh, um, wh so what's next? Or am I, am I allowed to do this? Or, you know, that kind of thing, that hesitancy mm -hmm. and that need for needing to know. And that can come from lots of different places as well. So whether yeah. it be a school thing or whether it be a thing because of additional needs that the child mm -hmm. has. Um, just, and, just being and you, anxious. Yeah, just in a yeah. new place. Absolutely. You know. And... Um, and sometimes children do need supporting in that way and having like a visual timetable or mm -hmm. some regular times to kind of come back together as a group and go, OK, such and such mention is mentioned this. Let's write that on the blackboard. Let's remember to do that. So we'll do that then. And then you've always got that to kind of go back to for those participants that need it. Um, and I think there are adults that need that, too, because yeah, there are adults definitely. who come to our sessions if they haven't been uh, very often before you kind of notice their anxiety through the way they talk to the children that they're bringing. Mm. So they might say, oh no, we've got to stop doing that now because we're, because remember, Gemma and Lewis said we were going to make the thing now. So mm. we've got to, we've got to stop. No, no more time for that now because we've got to do this yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, that kind of thing. And so that is that kind of like, oh, I, I need to know where I am now. I need to know what's happening next. And that is fair enough. Or mm. like, or adults come into us and going, um, so you mentioned at the beginning that we were going to be doing some fire lighting. When, when precisely is that? Because mm. I, need, I need to know exactly what time that's going to be. And you go, well, actually, it doesn't, I don't know. It depends. I'm feeling the vibe of the group. But it is a very unusual situation if you yeah. haven't been before. And I think yeah. most people, I hope, once they get to know it, appreciate it and value it as a mm. more, less structured time. Yeah, it, it, it kind of, um, it, I think part of it, part of that timetabling, just thinking about it for adults and um, a lot of us uh, live live our lives by a clock, mm. you know, and a lot of us that clock is our phone and, uh, you know, our calendar has this time that, and, and your day is dictated by time rather than by need mm -hmm. you know the clock says it is 10 o'clock and therefore i must stop this activity mm -hmm. because it is time for me to go and have a coffee or mm -hmm. go and you know uh, to move on to this this other invoice or to to do whatever else and um it's you know i'm, I'm a, a big fan of looking back and and going well what's what has human life been like for you know a long time and and more of that is you do it till it's done mm. and and uh, I think it, it kind of ties into two things of partly it's doing it till it's done and seeing a, a thing through to completion is really satisfying you know as a as for children quite often if the, if they do any sort of long-term projects in school it's always cut by the bell and gone yeah. well that's as far as you've gone it doesn't matter if you were perfectly in flow and it mm. took you 45 minutes and you were just gonna sail through actually bang you now have to do you know shift on a sixpence and now you have to think about geography yeah. because that's the way the world um is that does come back to the kind of um long-term nature of forest school doesn't it because yeah. if you have not had this opportunity to enter um more immersive play f the flow state mm -hmm. um the freedom that accepting that you are free to do what you choose without the leader of the session telling you yes and no um you need that you need that practice mm -hmm. in order to understand that that is possible 
before you can even enter that state, don't you? If you if you don't have that in the rest of your life, and so if you're only dipping in and out of sessions and coming very occasionally or coming for a one-off session, you aren't going to understand that. And I think until you do, you don't really get forest school. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't really understand it. You don't really understand that it's not like other toddler groups or it's not like a school. Um, I was going to add again. There's a bit of, I think, if, especially if you're starting out as a leader in your forest school mm-hmm. journey, that there's also anxiety from that. Yes. in the other way so you yeah. know that feeling where you've got a group and you think okay well they're doing that over there they're doing that over there this person's next to me um i did kind of mention that we were going to be doing this activity at some point mm. everyone seemed really immersed and busy right now but i've said i'm going to do it and if i don't do it if i don't go hey everyone let's all do this now yeah, then yeah. maybe people are going to go hang on a minute what have i just paid for i've just paid for like you know just playing in the mucking woods and what's that about just mucking yeah, around. and the leader hasn't shown me any kind of amazing bushcraft skills and i haven't made anything to take home so what is the point of this and i'm not going to book in again and all those anxieties that that go in your own mind but that kind of ties into i mean we've touched on it before when we talk about people starting and that that but that doesn't just exist in the session in that that sometimes people i feel like make a rod for their own back if they advertise we are reading this story you know on you know i feel like if this is a separate thing but i feel like it can get it off my chest it's not forest school if you're advertising a full timetable of the session Mm. before the session has taken place because where is the child led in that you've got, then got to explain to people oh, I that, don't know I think but, you could say I will be doing that but of course as well at the same yeah, time you could okay. be doing but, your own but thing but then that ties into if you have advertised very heavily like we're doing you know as everybody does it flouts copyright and says we're doing the Gruffalo yeah. this week yeah. and we're making Gruffalo this and then we're doing that and then we're doing that and so actually the people that are enticed by that advertising are coming expecting that mm-hmm. if you if you said that, you know we're doing a free play thing and with a bit of a gruffalo theme mm. that's very different it's it's when it's like we're making this and we're making that do you know what i was thinking um i was, I was as you were saying that i was like oh my, i wonder if we do that not through advertising it online or, in, or on a leaflet or anything but by saying to a group at the end of the session oh next week should we do a bit of this okay cool yeah we'll do that and so therefore you've committed to an idea seven days before um but a parent the other day so we were talking about um mince pie donuts so it was last oh, yeah. week and uh and i was setting off with a parent and a child on a bit of a woods wander and then i mentioned oh yeah and we'll have to get the fire lit soon for the mince pie donuts and then the, the mum went oh thank god you're still doing that because we've been talking about that all week but i did think oh maybe they will have changed their minds by then or maybe it won't maybe it won't happen and i thought hang on a minute that shows that parents do understand that we are flexible that even if we do say seven days beforehand we'll probably do a bit of this that they understand that that might change and that's and that probably co- good and that comes to the kind of you know i've said one of the biggest things for me doing forest school is thinking in circles and thinking of that cyclic cyclical nature of it as opposed to the linear progression of schooling and in the linear progression of state schooling if you miss a thing you've missed a thing mm-hmm. but thinking in circles you just go all right do it next week yeah. do it next month yeah. do it next autumn do yeah. it next you know yeah. you were going to be here hopefully touch wood for 80 odd circles of this sun let's mm-hmm. let's not rush and go jesus christ mm. we didn't make snowmen this year yeah. oh god and you're like yeah. you've got 79 other ones yeah. <laughs> like, just yeah. kind of let it go and that that freedom i think then once children and and parents get into that as you say it's, it is proper forest school to be like oh i get this i get that it might be next week and i get mm. that, that that's then freeing and i think that's when you get deep play because you don't have to go and check what does everything do you've got the freedom to go, I'm going to get really deep in this mud kitchen today. Mm-hmm. Maybe, metaphorically, maybe I'm actually going to get stand deep in the mud kitchen today. Yeah. You know, uh, and that freedom to, to you know... It, yeah, because it is, it's taking up the opportunities that the landscape is giving you and the yeah. weather and, the, you know, the elements, um, which you wouldn't necessarily be able to do if you have decided in advance it's going to be this, that and well, the other. That's, I mean, and that leads on... Uh, one of the things that I've written down is noticing a nature connection because mm-hmm. in that moment of boredom in, a, in my in my head the, the stereotypical moment of boredom is a child has finished you know they've come out of flow in whatever they were doing and they almost it's almost like you wake up and they're, yeah. s- they're stood in the middle of yeah. lots of play happening yeah. and they're just scouring the landscape and looking partly at children's play partly at the play space but it, but that moment is also when they might do some nature connection mm-hmm. and assess that. Well, hang on, that that tree looks different today, or 
Oh, that thing if I was they doing. accept and embrace the boredom, yes, yes. calmly. Yes. Yes. I would add to that 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 moment is a potential trigger for oh, yeah, some yeah, children. Yeah, yeah. So that that's is a, saying, it's a big transition, ad- isn't that's it? That's where I'm advocating boredom yeah. as a moment of reflection and pausing and doing other things. But I agree, for some children and for some adults, that's a horrendous situation. Yeah. But and again, going back to our. Um, you know, thing on perseverance and, mm-hmm. and working through things and to deny children the opportunity oh, yeah. to be bored is, you know, very damaging to go, don't mm. worry, I'm going to plan the whole thing and if I see anybody even starting that's mm. the one that gets me, when you can see children starting to get to the end of something and rather than letting it go to a complete end and ah, oh, okay, so they've finished with that one let's mm. may go to the board, let's mm-hmm. oh, I wonder what's going on over there, that when it starts to tail off some adults feel the need to just go Ooh, we've had bad transitions before let's get on to the next thing and yeah. let's let's never quite finish that and let's you know um it's a hard balance that isn't it because it is. if you're if you're dealing with with children who do have a lot of issues with transitions oh well, like, yeah then you can't you, then there is i don't know it's a tricky one the because thing. there's something to be said then for um because they will often bring it up themselves yeah, yeah they will sense that something's coming to an end and they'll go so what what do you reckon we should do yeah, after this and, but I, I think the way that we probably both deal with it is to um take it back to ourselves so mm. if the if the child is, is calm but you can see it's about to be an issue i'm not yeah. talking about um uh, you know big episodes of uh, lo- loss of control and yeah. dysregulation, dysregulation in um transitions here at all i'm talking sort of smaller scale but children who do have you can see they have that need to know what is coming mm-hmm. next um, that you can, I think I've noticed you doing, and I definitely do it in terms of, oh, I'm not sure, but I, I feel a bit cold, so I might play a running around game, at, you know, or, or I, I feel a bit like just having a sit and a relax now, or yeah. I'm, I'm going to have moving. a drink. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then actually what you're doing is kind of sensing kind of what they need, or you're... Reflecting it back at them yeah, as, as yeah. if it's you. Because it might not be me, yeah. but it's partly you're kind of reflecting what you can see them sort of shivering, and you then yeah. you might go... Yeah. I reckon I need to run and yeah. then there's also that thing of um, so the introductions to play are quite difficult from a from a dead stop mm-hmm. from, from oh, nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. into like oh those moments oh, so I've, icky. Got, I've got to try and get into that and yeah. so they you, feel icky for you and that yeah. should, that gives you an insight into how it feels for them that kind of like oh what are we what are we doing it's yeah. like that and the, the, only, the closest thing I can um, relate it to as adults is um, when you go to like a work training event and how do you start a con- if you start a conversation with the person sat next to you mm-hmm. because you definitely sit there for a little bit going right am I going to be a really chatty person today and I'm going to go and just go like hey where do you work what do you do mm. which is horrible because mm. you're going from a dead stop or do you wait until something happens and you kind of use that as a jumping off point to mm-hmm. go oh, I've yeah. got a projector in oh. yeah. you know or, you know I've been to some real dry <laughs> training yeah but stuff like that where you you know you think about that how much easier that is as an adult to go right that's a shared experience we both just had mm. there I'm going to use that now to talk to you and it'll be less awkward and for children walking up to an existing policeman and robbers game mm-hmm. and joining in is really hard versus you as an adult engage in in sort of mm. inviting some sort of big play of like I'm gonna go be a rabbit who wants to come and do it and then and then everyone goes no I'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> and you're on your own and You've you know you it. are You've you're on your to own it. you're just but like, I, would, okay. I would agree with you thinking just thinking about it uh, that that are those are moments of nature connection because mm. everyone kind of stops everyone feels a bit weirdly uncomfortable inside there's like an en- there's a ball of energy and someone's dropped it it's like ping pong ping pong ping pong oh and everyone just stands there and then you look to the environment and you go oh yeah the, check- the trees are already waving or look at the bird's nest or mm. you know those are the yeah there should be kind of well at drama school right you'd call it like circles of concentration so and we did this okay. exercise oh it was deep I've forgotten all about this yeah oh Hilary Wood if you're listening let's chat about circles of concentration <laughs> my head of acting right so you had to you'd be in the drama studio and you'd be sitting down and you would cross-legged on the floor and you imagine that you've got a circle of concentration around you which is like really small so just past your body and you just send out your concentration to that that kind of circle around you and then you increase and increase the circles of concentration until you are taking in 
the whole space oh, okay. and other people and your your awareness is massive you can see the matrix you can see the matrix man and then you can dodge bullets and it's amazing um but i wonder whether it's a bit like that you know when you're mm -hmm. in flow mm -hmm. You're zero yeah, you, you are, are like, yeah, yeah. and just it almost, yeah, you might be in flow with another person, but it's more um, likely that you're in flow, in flow by yourself, and there might be someone over there, and you kind of, they're in your periphery, but you're on it with what you're doing. Um, and then that moment where, yeah, you come out of it, and your circle of, if you let it, if you allow those yeah, moments yeah. to linger, that is when your circle of concentration can become wide enough. And I think with a lot of children, actually, now that I'm saying this, you know those moments where you might go on a walk with some kids and you go, oh, okay, I've noticed an, a nature thing here, which I could point out to some children, mm -hmm. and this could be a really nice little moment for them. <clears throat> hey, check out that woodpecker over there. Look, yeah, yeah. this is really... Look at that, look at that. And then sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, look at that. That's really cool. Oh, why is it doing that? Blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. Have a nice mm -hmm. little chat, a nice little nature moment. How but perfect. Other times, you will do that, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, whatever. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. don't even notice it because their circle of concentration is not that is not that wide, and they can't necessarily ping it backwards and forth mm. with that elas elastic band. Yeah, yeah. They can't stop. Like I'm fixing this level of concentration right now. It's me and the stick and the tree that I'm hitting, or the it's me and my feet walking on the ground, and it can't yeah. extend beyond that. So yeah. you can point to that thing over there all you want, but I'm just not capable yeah. of noticing it. Do you know what I mean? Have you noticed those moments yeah, yeah, yeah. where you? Yeah, and, and, and it's, as you say, it's kind of, that is one of the things about um, having, you know, the, the landscape and the natural environment as, a, as another teacher almost, mm. is that they, if you were being a, a teacher about it, you would say, right, I won't show them the woodpecker until they've completely finished and have their attention focused on the thing mm. nature or doesn't... i would use a tambourine yeah, yeah. or You'd a counting down a and then you would yeah. say right now yeah. direct your attention to that but because nature doesn't give a fuck it just goes like whatever you're doing now there's a woodpecker yeah. or you know like the wind is going to blow suddenly now and yeah. and that doesn't meet you halfway at all no. you and, and, and that's, that's where you get a, and that's where you get a, a little child who was really keen to see the woodpecker but it took them a bit too long for oh their circle God, of concentration yeah. to extend that far it's because they were too busy just focusing on not falling over and then well hang on tree what do you mean by tree oh tree okay which tree <laughs> that tree oh it's gone now sorry you missed it oh i missed it where is it but where is it? i want to see it you can't but i want to just can't nature make. don't give a it's fuck just, mate it's just gone now nature doesn't and then give a weeks fuck. later they're still going can we go to that area of the woodland yeah, to see yeah. the woodpecker but it's static it's that's not like there can anymore, we see it there mate. you yeah. missed it yeah but yeah i can't you know and it it really intrigues me to think what are they imagining in their head because they that little tiny child definitely doesn't know what a woodpecker looks like so they're not going oh yeah i have a picture of a woodpecker in my head and i'm gonna yeah. see it in real life like yeah, they yeah. don't even know the concept of woodpecker yeah so god how must that must be that must be a very strong feeling that's I'm going to learn a new thing and oh, no, I don't know I don't even know what it is yeah no, I can't see it yeah yeah and then also if you, you think about that and, and how difficult that is if you're in flow that uh, you know you're in the middle of flow and someone goes look a flim flam right because that's the same <laughs> yeah, level yeah, right yeah, yeah. and you have to make a decision or your brain is trying to make a decision on is a flim flam like a stick that's slightly bent or is it a dragon that is going to eat me mm. right and and you have to make a decision on like no information mm. about whether you you stop yeah. what you're doing to look at that woodpecker and if you're real if you're in some deep play of something else then then that doesn't seem as appealing mm. or, or, you know or, or you've got to take a gamble and go yeah but i'm pretty comfortable with what i'm doing mm. uh, you know versus kind of getting out there if you like this podcast and want to support more episodes, you can donate through Patreon. Visit patreon.com forward slash children of the forest to show your support for the Forest School podcast. I do think um, one of the things that I, I would like to touch on in, in terms of deep play and, and shallow play is, um, and, and boredom actually, I think it's more boredom, is um, there's, there's a... There's a kind of trend recently with with the increase in actually no i would say it's flipped recently but there has been a growing trend of um like with increased social media and increased you know tv on demand and increased you know i mean you can't hold a conversation with me now without no. looking at your phone um 
it's not. I've put it down now. No, but what I mean down. is, we, we don't allow ourselves to be bored. Mm. I would say very recently, there's mm. been a bit of a shift back where you mm. see a lot more people are going, actually, I've quit social media because I don't yeah. think it's healthy. I'm but, having a break. I'm having but, a, a break yeah. or, a re, you know, I'm going minimalist or whatever it is. But in general, not allowing ourselves to be bored has been a growing trend mm. over however many years. And um, uh, in John Gatto's work, he's talking about that in a, in a broader sense of saying that um, because we don't ever allow ourselves to be bored, what we're doing is raising um, consumers, mm. not just of goods, but of entertainment and of services. And um, the ability to entertain yourself in moments of boredom or moments of rest is incredibly valuable because in general it costs little to no money it is good for your brain and it you know and it, it I don't want to say it doesn't stimulate an economy or whatever mm. but but if you make something that holds people's attention mm. you want them to be constantly dependent on that drip I need help of, I need help yeah because yeah. the second we're kind of oh I'm I'm bored and, and that's another thing where I think schooling doesn't help you know, mm. I say school. It, it, oh, the cat's out of the bag. I don't like schools. Um, but really, <laughs> you don't like schools. I keep it very oh well hidden. God. I'm very yeah. Get out. You know, you know me. Cards what close to my heck? chest. I don't have <laughs> to be outspoken. But that it doesn't. It, it's that. It's adding to that cycle of like. Don't man. I think you need to stop talking because I'm in a depressed state. Um, as I said sorry. to you about capitalism. But then, okay, so let's, let's, let's the positive then. The positive then <laughs> is that at Forest School we are encouraging children to be self-sufficient in their entertainment, mm. right? And I think that is so underrated as a, as a skill. But we are facilitating children doing that, and mm. the, and the children that are here you go, I'll poke you up. The children that are self-sufficient in their entertainment and can do deep play and can do that consume less resources mm. right We're, it's a massive thing at the moment we need to consume less mm. resources they are not contributing to you know stuff being shipped all around the mm. world and all of the stuff that comes with that they're not as susceptible to um outs i don't say outside ideas because that makes it sound like you want to run mm. like a little cult but yeah. what i mean is then they're not being spoon-fed ideas all the time and yeah. you know you you take someone back that's why i think actually things like um, what I would say very traditional forest school games like hunters and rabbits you could take that back 500 years mm. and you could play exactly the same game with children not in... that we're saying that the olden days were no 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 but no no but what I'm saying is though th th those were. games have <laughs> lasted because without without um, well they're primal aren't they it's, they're it's tapping into uh, what but they're not they're, they're different to what I mean is they're different to and we've had this. How many? I mean, I can name. I named all of the in Paw Patrol the other day. Mm. I've never seen it, mm. but the amount of play that has happened here. And I'm not saying that children acting out play that they see on TV is bad. But what I mean is, you know, they were so deep in that law, and and they were so. But but because it was being given to them, it was fixed. Right. Marshall could not do this thing. You know, Sky could not do this thing. You yeah. want to see how cool and I am, of, guys? Yeah, you and know. often there's ne there can't be two Skies. No. But I want to be Sky too. There can't be two. Because it is spoon-fed as like, yeah. this, is th this is how it works, mm. not this is what you can do with it. Mm. You know, because it exists as a law, as a written down, you know, or not written down, as an animated kind of mm. line in the sand, children aren't given the freedom. To, and they struggle then to go... Well, how do I make this play work if it's not going to work exactly like it does mm. on the TV? Mm. Then, then how does that play work? Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm making sweeping statements now, but that's why I think some things like Hunters and Rabbits or Cops and Robbers or, you know, Hide and Seek, they're games that are adaptable and they fit the needs of a group and that, you know, everyone's got some sort of ownership over them and, mm. and those things. And that's deep play because you're really manipulating a thing and the thing is the idea. You know, but you're able to go. What can this idea do for me? Yeah. As opposed to being given the here is the Paw Patrol idea. Mm. What does it do? And once you've finished with it, just chuck it in. Yeah, the bin. and we've talked a lot, haven't we, about like children adapting games like that, where 
uh, they go, hang on a minute, okay, we're going to play again, but this time we're going to add a rule, okay? We're going to add a rule, we were doing this yesterday. Mm. This time, if one person, and often you have, that's where you just nod and smile as the child in their own imaginary world is they're talking to you so but they're going, and then the thing and then but except if it's thursday in which case blah, blah, and you're like okay should we just should we start because i have no idea or what stuff that is stuff that you stuff that oh, and, and and actually that being able to like play test stuff and it not work yeah so going like and experiencing and quite, failure through yeah, that it's like this was my idea i put it out to all of you guys who are playing we all went yeah cool and ran with it and it flopped and it completely yeah. flopped and you just have to and you just go oh, okay cool let's try and learning part. that you that it's not like uh a le- not 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 a level playing field but that if you make a load of rules that are like oh and also i've got this imaginary gun so mm. if i say pow even if you're really far away that's me shooting you and you have to stop for for 45 minutes mm. um, and people mm. just going no nah. oh. and i've heard people talk about the difference between another comparison that i like to make is board games versus video games mm-hmm. in the um uh, a video game has what? Um, well, I'm a nerd. no, 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 because I just had a very strong memory of. Um, I don't know if this is what you were going to say, but I'll pitch in quickly um, about like changing board game. Like if you play a board game, you play it loads and loads and loads, yes. and then you change the rules yes. because you get bored of it. Yes. Um, so Monopoly was that. One summer holidays, me and my little gang of mates, we all lived in this cul-de-sac, and so we could safely walk to each other's houses all the time. So we just like shifted yeah. around. Um, and you my grew house... up in Bugsy Malone, didn't you? Yes. In that That's uh, right. in that film. Uh, they. <laughs> Um, so Monopoly was at my house and so we always played Monopoly at my house and then we developed this new rule of Mad Monopoly we called it so you deal out right. everything so you deal out all the property all the money all the hotels and houses right. and then you just decide what you do with it so you still go around the board incredible um, so you end up with like a billionaire and people just going bankrupt straight away so it's really high high emotional wow. very big the like, that reflected itself in the real world I know I mean wouldn't oh, that be it'd weird it would be mental wouldn't it um <laughs> And then it would always end up with a massive row. And there'd, there'd be some interesting, like, bartering moments. A lot mm-hmm. of, like, um, a bit more like diplomacy. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. well, I'm completely broke. So if you give me, like, 500 quid now, like, I'll give you... And I, when you land on my hotel, I won't charge you, okay? Because there's no charts. rules. Yeah, all yeah. of that kind of stuff would happen. It was all very social. And that was really, really fun. And I loved it until someone would have an absolute hissy fit. And then... And someone else... <laughs> would go this is fun this is so without rules that i'm now going to go magic money tree and just throw all of the pieces all over my living room right so the money <laughs> would just be flying through the air like this and then they'd all go bye then Gemma, and run and i just look at my living room <laughs> Incredible. with a magic money tree where someone's been like keeping their money on the curtain rail for fun and pegging it to stuff and then wanging it all over the place and i'd have to tidy it up and they'd all go yeah it's sunshine i'm we're going but yeah that was my thing is that what you're going to say? Well, Video it's, games, it's similar to what it. I was going to say in that um, there's, you know, a, a board game works because you are collectively agreeing to play by the rules. Yeah. The, the game does not catch fire if you move six places when the dice rolled four. Yeah. Right? But socially, yeah. you have to, you know, mm. it's that thing. Whereas a video game, if there is a hard wall on something, mm. there is a hard wall on something. Mm. And unless you're a seven-year-old hacker that's going to open up the code and mm. make it so that that doesn't work. Um, but then I think you are seeing now a rise in what I think is a more um, beneficial type of game, which is things like, uh, but, but it doesn't work for games companies, so that's why they have to try and move around it. But things like Minecraft mm. that don't necessarily have a goal, yeah. they are open, wo- you know, open world games without a storyline that just go, here is a physics simulation, mm-hmm. play with it, yep. see what you can do with it. It's the essence of deep play. Mm. And it's very different. And I don't think enough people give it credit for like, Mario is you move from the left to the mm. right and you complete this in the, in the set way, right? But because Minecraft and, and games like that, are, they're basically Lego. Mm. They are just, explore this, play yeah. with it, see how deep you can get into it. Yeah. Um, and, and that is a different type of play. Mm. And so, yeah, it's very immersive. You know, it, but that's also the downside of it. So yeah. having a seven-year-old who is at that stage, big time, like he blooming loves it. Um, we don't have it, mm-hmm. and uh, other children that he knows, parents are going through quite a tough time with it. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely agree that it is facilitating that type of play. But there's something about it being, I don't know. I, I sometimes wonder, am I like a stuck in the past? unrealistic fuddy-duddy fear like 
uh, Luddite, right? right. That just hates technology. Because I don't hate technology, I hope, I like to think. But for me, there is a difference with how, how immersive it is. You know that thing that I was talking about, about transitions. So you come yep. out of deep play and um, where you've been in flow and you're really in that other world and then you come out of it. And for some, some children, that's really hard. Mm-hmm. But you're not, if, it, if it's not through a screen, if it's not through a computer game, then yep. you're probably a bit like asleep. You're probably going to be jogged out of it by some external factor. Mm-hmm. It's dinner time. Um, it's, it's you know it's time yeah, to brush teeth. Or, it's, yeah, or if you're out, you know, if you're outside, I mean, less of an adult in, in position, more of a kind of. I heard a noise, and, oh, okay. or yeah, yeah. another person yeah. ran up to me yeah. and said, "Hey, come do this," and so you jogged out of it. Yeah. Whereas when you're immersed in a screen-based thing, mm-hmm. it's a lot harder to naturally have that broken mm. and so it's more of a wrench you know that thing we we're talking yeah, about yeah. with the roots of your yeah, engagement yeah. stretching and going deeper and deeper and tendrils. deeper the tendrils and then when they're ripped away from you yeah. very suddenly which they it's are like whiplash. mental whiplash, it's like isn't it? pain so if you're pe- and it's and it's completely adult led then the end mm. of it unless it's the battery running out mm-hmm. Um, or the internet going down. But those are hard things but for children still, to understand. Yeah, so, exactly. So, and they're still very abrupt. They're yeah. not kind of like, oh, I can hear somebody running towards me and I can hear that they're shouting my name and I can hear that they're going to... And now they're showing me that there's another play opportunity. It's different. It's just like, there's a thing which is really engaging and then there's nothing. There is what you need is a nothing. laptop that slowly just gets darker yeah, as the battery dies. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't... So you're still like trying to get... Desperately trying to... I think I can still yeah. see. I think I can still... That would be it's good. Gone. You've just invented a new thing. Just to put a resistor because in the plug. Because that's what all the parents that I know. That, honestly, there needs because you know, like um, on Audible, the sleep timer yeah. goes quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter in a really oh, gentle it? way. I only noticed yeah. that when I put it on during the day when I was mm. doing some exercise, and so I noticed it does it in a very gradual, subtle way. So it's really gentle. Mm. Um, that's what they need to do because it is like pain. You know, if you're if you've been the parent of a seven-year-old or older, mm. and you're going, it's time to turn that off now. Whatever do, they're doing, whether they're just watching telly, whatever. I think that would be true and of they Lego find as well. That though, hard. Isn't it? You know, something that's older than that. No, it's not. You don't think so? No, it's not the same. You can't see, but Gemma's got a real pained look on it's her face. It's not the same. Like though. real, like she's eaten a bag of lemons. <laughs> it's really hard because then you want to be open and flexible and let children. You know, especially with Minecraft. Like I don't mm. have anything against the game itself, but if you're a parent of a child who finds it very difficult I think most children do like go oh, okay I know my limits I know that I should not spend too much time on the screen and I should interact with other real humans yeah, yeah, and I, I should probably can. eat and go to the toilet you know I have heard parents say they will pee themselves while yeah, they're playing yeah. you know that's not good you wouldn't do that if you were playing actually no you would no you wouldn't pee yourself but you would poo in the garden that's what, that's what you would do in the olden times so I'm told what are you on about right in the olden times that just came completely out of left field we were like having a real thing garden. about like you screen time up, that's what and you it just do. went do shit in the garden mate <laughs> <laughs> or okay so the equivalent of it is I'm outside I'm really immersed oh I really need the toilet do you need I was going to say is this a story <laughs> what have you done oh, no what have you yeah, we just what have you internalised we used to poo in I'm the I'm really woods. worried because I Not work outside garden. with you I don't poo in the woods here <laughs> But when I was with my gang in the woods when I was a kid, we would poo in the woods all the time because it's like, you're not going to go home, you're not going to finish the game. It would be literally, they're pooing behind that tree. They carry on the game while they're doing a poo, they're still chatting, and then you just carry on going, don't you? But you don't poo yourself, which you might do if you were playing Minecraft. That's what I'm saying. Levels engagement too deep with Minecraft. You will literally poo yourself rather than... found the title for the podcast we didn't know what this episode was going to be about right what's your plug what are you calling it poo in, poo in the woods <laughs> <laughs> poo your pants or poo in the woods question mark yeah that'll start a really good debate <laughs> just no context people are going to have to listen to like 45 minutes of like quite serious debate before they go we said it was about shitting in the woods but it doesn't seem to have come up yet this seems quite mature this seems like two educational professionals oh, they can't possibly be talking oh. about shitting in the woods yeah I think that I levels of levels engagement call it that look we said, I don't think we've touched on half of what we wanted well, to well it's the time out. to go now because I, think I need to wee in the woods <laughs> in the toilet oh. I need to wee in the toilet 
Okay, we can't end every podcast like that though. <laughs> there needs to be a I different. Know, it's because I drink loads of coffee before we start and okay. during. Um, okay, let's let's end it in a different way. What did you want to say? Have well, you finished no, it? No, people are just gonna it's gone now. I can't come. It's finished. I, I can't come back from. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Happy Christmas. You can visit Children of the Forest in person and get incredible face-to-face training on a range of different topics, whether you're a full-time forest school teacher, a classroom teacher, or senior management. Visit childrenoftheforest.com for details and to book on to all the upcoming training.